Welcome back to State of Decay 2 and the Bounty Hunters. Uh, this is not my usual State of Decay 2 recording day, uh, but I just, I left this bounty pack almost done. I'm one objective away from completing it. And so I don't have a lot of time right now, but I thought I just couldn't resist jumping in and trying to get this done before October. Now, when you're watching this, it's probably October. Uh, but when I'm recording it, it's still September 29th. Uh, the new bounty pack is not yet launched. And so... I am trying to figure out what I can do. I need to complete a mission with no followers. And actually, somebody might have just given me a mission. Hey, Sahin. What do you want to do, man? Let's get rid of some infestations. Uh, oh, so he wants me to switch to him. Okay, sure. Absolutely. Now, there were a couple of different mission options uh, that I had at my disposal, but I chose this one because I have been letting these things get a little bit crazy. Uh, so we, we woke up a plague heart by accident. That led to a siege infestation starting over here. At any point, these guys are going to attack us. And so uh, I should probably take care of business here. I should take out this infestation and probably... I should take out the Plague Heart, too. Of course, if I do take out this Plague Heart, it's probably going to wake up both of these other Plague Hearts, and it's going to make the problem worse. So, actually, should I take out the Plague Heart? Maybe not this episode. I'm not sure which bounty pack is coming in October, because I can't keep track of this crap. But um, it might have some Plague Heart fighting uh, bounties. And if it does, I'm going to want some Plague Hearts to fight. So, no, I'm not going to go after this Plague Heart this turn. I'm just going to go after the Infestation. Now, my character here is uh, a little bit worse for wear, and that's not surprising because uh, I set him on fire so many times last episode. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, what has he got on him here? He's got uh, Sided Mark III, uh, M14 DMR. He's got backup bullets for both and some fire. He's good. He's fine. Now, does he have gunslinging or anything oh yeah he's a red talon guy that's why he could take being set on fire he's a red talon guy Ooh, we've also got fairfield stories family memento you know just taking out one infestation that's i mean yeah sure that's going to complete the bounty i think that's not going to be as satisfying uh as far as missions go it's just it's just one thing i feel like we should do a little bit more and i think what we should probably do is the Hippo Thomas mission. So let's let's get this infestation taken care of. But then let's do a little bit more than that before we wrap this episode up. Infestation first, though, because I don't want to get sieged. Hey, everybody. Oh. Now, oh, hey. Okay, we've taken out all the bloaters. Oh, get off me. I'm here. Okay, I just heard a juggernaut. This is not going to be as simple as I thought. Now, because this guy's red talon... He's not losing uh, stamina nearly as fast as you would expect him to. And the reason for that is he's got the equivalent of Marathon, which is a skill that as long as your inventory is not too full, you can run endlessly without losing any stamina. And so him running in circles around this thing, trying to clean up all the zombies, no big deal for him, even though it would be really rough for somebody else. Oh, what the heck? Okay. Where is this other screamer? There's supposed to be a... Oh, there he is. Hi. Okay. Infestation cleared, but uh, we got bigger problems. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's see if I can... No. I'm 
just trying to clear out all of the annoying zombies that are in my way. Now, my character just reacted to a screamer. And I'm not sure why he did that. Where is there a screamer? Oh, what the? There is a second juggernaut. Okay. Okay. Ah. Hello. Okay. One juggernaut, sure. <laughs> Two juggernauts. That's just getting silly. But I am making as little noise as possible with this low, low caliber suppressed pistol. And the reason I'm doing that, well, partly just because it's the pistol I happen to have, but also the good, the good thing about that is that we didn't attract a whole bunch of ads while we were fighting. And by ads, I mean like additional zombies. So I'm gonna try to take out as many of these guys as I can. and just isolate the juggernauts. Okay, looks like they've got at least one other dude with them. No, no, they don't. There is a horde. Look, there's a horde icon on the mini-map, but that's because these two guys are in a horde together. So that horde icon is just between them at all times. All right, there's a screamer over here. I'm gonna take that screamer out first. Oh. Because I don't want him to make things worse. And then, okay, I mean, I guess I could leave now, but I think I can take him. No, notice how that, firing that unsuppressed gun, which I think actually has a break on it too, That attracted all the neighbors. Okay, so I gotta take out. Oh, not him. Gotta take out all his friends again. Oh, there's a screamer over this way. I think we're back down to just the Juggernaut. <laughs> he immediately has friends. know if I can I don't think I can get to him without getting hit by zombies so let's do some more ah crap there we go and I got gotcha. you I am almost sick, but that's why I brought Kira with me. Whew. Bunch of plague samples. Now, I'm not sure we got my car so screwed up. Did I bring any repairs with me? I did. Sweet. I'm so clever. All right, so 
Do I have any outposts? I do. Yeah, hmm. That's not gonna work. Where did I stick them? Oh, I put them down here where I was working. That makes sense. Oh, it looks like the other, the other plague cart might have sent this one, or maybe I don't know where he came from. I'm about to be in a situation that's just as bad, but whatever, it's fine. Ooh, there's a rare skills trader down there. But, hmm, hmm. You know what? That might trump the family memento thing I was planning to do. Play zombies in all directions. Better be careful. Yeah, the rare skills trader. They offer some stuff that is uh, irreplaceable. Basically, they are the real rare skills trader is what gives you the ability to customize aspects of your character you normally cannot customize. Specifically, what uh, advanced skills they have access to on their core skills. So, one problem that I was running into in a previous episode was that, what in the world? Okay. I think we shouldn't be spawning hordes there. Um... <laughs> But one of my characters, Jose, um, he doesn't have any of the useful skills. <laughs> He's got some of the worst skills you can have. Um, and so I was trying to play as him, and I was just having a really frustrating time. So I think I might want to grab some skill customization books so I can improve Jose. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go get some rare skills, and we're going to... It's not actually, this guy is not really a rare skills trader in that he sells rare skills. I think he might sell some rare skills, but it's actually, he is a trader who is rare and he sells skills. That's, uh, that's what he does. It's not the most realistic name for this guy. It's not a very in-universe name. Um, because <laughs> who sells skills? Nobody. I mean, colleges, I guess. But in real life, no one ever advertises themselves as a skills trader. That's silly. Skills are not merchandise. Uh, wow, what the? Oh, okay. That's pretty funny, actually. I came in here like, like I could assume he was in here. The rare traders, they list multiple locations for a reason. You don't know which one they're at. I came in here assuming there was going to be a trader here. Which is not an assumption I could make. Okay. So yeah, I think they're not here. Though, I'm kind of... Huh. When I set up the mysterious wandering traders mission, I made it so that the... Um, the map icon would disappear when you'd searched and confirmed a place didn't include him. Didn't I do that? Or did I do that with a different mission? I didn't make the rare skills trader mission. I'm wondering if somebody forgot and skipped a step and didn't clear out those objectives because you're supposed to do that. Like when, when the player clears out a space and confirms that the rare skills trader isn't there, you're supposed to clear out that objective mark. It's a manual process. We're faking these objective markers, basically. Um, is this a person? Yes. Okay, found you. Hi, Julius. Okay, fishing, hygiene, lichenology, shoppers, recycling, sewing. Oh, so he doesn't have any of the... Am I misremembering? This guy doesn't have any of the skills. This guy doesn't have any of the skills that like the the, the books that completely revamp uh, a character's core skill. Is this all he's got? He's only got these skill books. Does he ever have the other the other kinds of skills, like the ones that replace your core skills, or is that only from the mysterious wandering trader? Now I'm starting to question everything. Okay, so this guy does not have the stuff that I wanted him to have. So that was actually a waste. 
of my time. Oh, good. Another another infestation. We're playing Infestation Whack-A-Mole today. Okay. So what we're going to do is go back home. So actually, maybe we should stop by an outpost. Yeah, let's just stop by an outpost. Because we all going... I mean, I, I am going to go to an infestation that is close to my home. But... I think I think it'll be slightly more economical with my time if I stop here. Pick up some replacement ammunition. All right. I'm ignoring the conversation that's going on on the radio. <laughs> It's just some Trumbull Valley nonsense. You know, usual stuff. Alright. So now we're going to hit that infestation. And maybe that horde along the way. Oh, it's moving fast. It's probably headed to the same infestation, though. Uh, oh, one thing we'll also do is cancel rare skills, trader. That was a bust. Yep, infestation whack-a-mole. So, now, back before the heart attack update, infestation whack-a-mole was basically all infestations were. They would just crop up for no apparent reason, and they would just sit there forever until you defeated them. And uh, they were annoying, and that's all they were. Uh, they didn't add up to anything bigger. And so infestation whack-a-mole was genuinely just an annoying thing. Now, what infestation whack-a-mole is, now after the heart attack update, infestation whack-a-mole is how you prevent sieges from happening. And if I want to, like, if I felt like it right now, I could prevent it entirely by going and killing the plague hearts that are spawning these infestations. I could keep any infestations from happening by keeping the plague hearts, oh my gosh. Come on! Really? Really? I'm trapped on this? Oh, get off. I refuse to believe that I'm stuck. Like, I'm drifting ever so slightly. Okay. No, I think I have to accept that I'm stuck. What a weird way to be stuck. Okay, fine. Fine. Get off my car, you big dumb zombie. Okay, there we go. I am respawned. All right, well, that was a waste of gas. Where am I now? Oh, wait. Oh, they put me on the other side of the river. Well, that's what I wanted to do anyway. Awesome. I appreciate it. If you're going to unstick me somewhere, unstick me in, in the direction of my destination. That's amazing. Um... All right. I don't think that's the horde I saw coming. Oh, wait. Do we have even more? We've got even more infested sites. Okay, okay. Let's do this. Well, that was... quick. All right. I basically shot threw the screamer into the bloater and killed them both at the same time. So because I'm catching these things early, like the first one that I fought, I think it had two screamers. Um, but because I'm catching these ones early, they probably only have a single screamer in them. So it's really, really quick to clear them. It used to be infestations. You had to clear all of the specific zombies that had been spawned with the infestation. And you also... I had to clear any new ones who joined the infestation during the fight. And you had to do all of that or it wouldn't count.
But now, you just gotta kill the Screamer, or, you know, kill everybody with a Molotov, like I just did. And it goes away. Okay, so you know what? I am actually gonna do the family memento thing. Oh no, what? Oh, the skill, the, the, the mission got messed up. They don't know the name of the NPC. That's, that's really sad. Does that mean that it's gonna be messed up a lot? Like, is there not gonna be an NPC? How messed up is this mission now? Because I don't know why they wouldn't be able to find the name of the NPC to put in the objective text. So, okay. This is a potentially busted mission. Uh, I'm gonna have to play through it to investigate how busted it is. So, yeah, because I thought I was supposed to talk... Wasn't I supposed to talk to somebody first? Before just going out in search of somebody's missing stuffed animal? I don't remember well enough what happens in this mission. I gotta be careful killing zombies around here, though, because we got sleeping hearts. And it's better to let sleeping hearts lie. Did not mean to do that. It's better to let sleeping hearts lie. Okay. I forgot where Hippo Thomas is. Oh, gosh. Okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna have to be a little more cavalier than I was planning. Yeah. We've woken a plague heart, but that's fine. We're gonna have to go on a plague heart spree in one of these future missions. Okay, so I'm searching one of the places that's listed by the mission. Again, I've forgotten how this mission works. I don't know if I actually have to search all these places if there's a particular one that always has Hippo Thomas in it. Yo, there we go. There's Hippo Thomas. Okay, so I just I just found this Hippo Memento. We didn't listen to whatever dialogue might have told us about Hippo Thomas. But basically, somebody wants, I think, a stuffed hippopotamus to remember a lost family member by it's something like that um yeah and i think it's a child that we're not sure i think it's somebody's child but we're not actually sure that the child is dead but now now the mission's gone what happened what happened to this mission it couldn't find the npc And so it skipped to the Find Hippo Thomas stage in the mission. But then... There was no returning it. That What happened? Could this be... Okay, I remember my previous session. Like, last session. The Hippo Thomas mission spawned, and I didn't do it. Could there have been some kind of error with attempting to respawn the mission a second time? Could something have gone wrong? And so it thought it could spawn the mission, except it couldn't find the Enclave. And so it only did the objectives that didn't involve the Enclave? That might be what happened. I don't know. I don't know if that's a, if that's a viable explanation. <laughs> We've woken up so many plague hearts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, since I have completed these two bounties, I'm going to go back to the bounty broker. I'm going to wrap them up. And then, if there are any more infestations by the time I get back, which seems likely, we'll wrap those up and then wrap the, the episode up. Like I said, this this should be a shorter episode than usual. I just, I just didn't love, you know, the next time I come and play with the bounty hunters... It's going to be about October bounties. And I didn't want to have a September bounty just sitting there, un incomplete, you know? You know what? I could probably... Since this, is, since this episode is basically about infestation whack-a-mole, I could probably help myself out here by clearing this infestation. 
Oh, look how many... You can't see how many freaks there are. Look how many freaks there are. That's crazy. Okay. There's another feral. Multiple bloaters. Oh! Alright, alright. Ow! Oh! Okay, so one zombie hit me, and that set me up for the juggernaut. Alright. Infestation gone. That's all I care about. I already did some juggernaut fighting nonsense. I don't need to do more. I got nothing to prove. Let's go see the bounty broker. Get off. Get off my car. All right, all right. <laughs> Let's turn on some headlights. Head whoa, whoa! <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Whenever I almost hit a bloater, I'm always giggly. I might have hit two bloaters at once, and I'm not actually sure if bloater clouds stack or not. Uh, Tressy. I'll deal with you later. Why did we decide to make these Trumbull Valley missions like automatically pin themselves? It's like maybe the first time you play you want that, you know, to like to point out what's special about this map. But like, maybe when the map was new that was a good idea, but now that like, I don't know. Now that I'm playing on this map for like the fifth time, I don't know if I really want Tressie to just take over my UI all the time like that. Oh well. Getting real close. Starting to run a little low on gas, but I think we got enough to get here and back because it's not the lethal zone. I'm pretty sure lethal zone makes you run out of gas faster because it does ev makes everything harder okay this is a lot of zombies to try to uh talk to the bounty broker around i might need to uh, do something about this i have no idea how that zombie died but whatever <laughs> Oh, a nearby plague heart stirs. Oh, crap. When I kill this guy, it's probably going to wake up. Ooh, it didn't. Weird. Okay, well, let's not worry about it. Uh, Let's talk about bounties. Let's wipe out these last two bounties. Okay, we've got everything for the Trifecta Pack. Including... The Jawbreaker and the Sweet Spot Bat. So now... Hmm. So there's outlaws passing through. According to this curveball, there's outlaws passing through. I get less influence for stuff. It's hard to find crafting items. Wait, why is it showing... It's showing the objective from the previous curveball. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so saying I can find the outlaws, and I guess I can make this curveball go away if I defeat the outlaws, but why is it showing the objective from the previous curveball mission? Well, I've got some bug reports to write. <laughs> uh, yeah. I wonder, like, if I complete this curveball objective... Is it going to come around? Like, is it going to be hanging around the next time there's a curveball mission? Am I just going to keep accumulating curveball objectives? Because that seems weird. <laughs> Alright, I actually am kind of curious. Oh, looks like we may know where we're going. We are running pretty low on... Uh, Pretty low on gas. 
Aren't you glad that cars can just pass straight through small trees? It's one of the best things, a little glitch in reality there. <laughs> Okay, so I've got two bug reports to write. One is about how the Hippo Thomas mission was just lacking its people for mysterious reasons. And the other one is that my curveball mission seemed to be accumulating objectives from previous missions. Oh, gosh. Okay. Real quick, before we engage, let's, uh, oh, what are you doing? No, no, no! Don't refuel. I mean, don't drive. Refuel, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to refuel, is what I'm trying to say, and I'm not trying to drive. All right. So I marked that location because it is marked on the map. I don't know if that's actually where the outlaws are. It looks like I caught this horde on the move. But because the bloaters are so slow, they fell behind their friends. So is this where the outlaws are? Central base here. Well, I see a giant mass. Hmm. No. Apparently not. Well, I wonder why this is the Oh, the whole horde's here now. Ah. That wasn't helpful. Two of those guys were armored, weren't they? Wait, whoa, what? What happened? They burned up to just cinders. They're completely gone. What? That's weird. Okay. Okay, so I guess... Did the mission just go away? Something's up with my missions right now. I don't know what the deal is, but... Oh, wait. Oh, here we go. Okay, so there is... All right. Pin to HUD. So I pin it from the curveballs menu, not from the map. And now I've pinned it. So I think now that I've gone here... It, for, for some reason, it's centered on this building, but this is where the enemies are. So I think I need to go... I've never played this mission before. Oh, okay. Let's um, be very careful. All right. So we got some bad guys and also some zombies. Are they living in a shed? They're living in a shed. All right. Well, I know the first thing I want to do. Y'all coming out? Oh, okay. Well, step one, barge in. Step two, set everyone on fire. Step three, everybody's dead. We have, what the heck? We have killed the wild oats before they left. And we cleared an infestation I didn't know existed. So cool, awesome, well done, well done everyone. All right, there's, there's a lot of zombies now.
Ooh, that uh, bloater dropped something. Oh, there's some juggernauts in the distance. Okay. We do not want this to escalate. Okay, I think we must have some kind of... I think whatever is making their eyes purple is making, like, maybe them easier to knock down. Because I don't think this 22 bullet should have taken out this guy. That guy fell down when I shot him, and that's, I think, not normal for a 22. All right. I think... Oh, holy crap. There were four? Okay, fine. Anything cool on these guys? Eh, nah, it's normal stuff. I think we could have probably put a little bit more thought into the risk and reward propositions of our game. Because most of your best rewards you just find randomly. You know, I mean, you, you search the right place. But, oh, hey. Oh, hey, this bloater, he got up. What? I've never seen a bloater get up before. Oh, that's weird. You saw that. He was lying down before and he got up? Here is your reward. It's an eternal one. Whoa. Hey, stop it. All right, now I'm scared to get in my car. <laughs> I think the moment I get in my car, it's getting flooded with this smoke. Come on, go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Come on. Get out of here. All right, anyway. What was I talking about before? I got completely distracted. Oh, wait. I'm not recording this on a live stream, so no one can tell me. Crap. I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, well. It's fine. It's fine. It really fucking sucks you didn't help us out, man. I've already spent put more time on this than I intended to. But we are out of... We're out of siege infestations. We've got... There's like one non-siege infestation here that's a little close. I should probably do something about this. There we go. We'll just pretend that that bat swing had a purpose and not just, it wasn't just me forgetting what buttons to press. And. Wind our way up these campgrounds. I'm pretty sure that in the original version of, of the map, I might as well take this guy out. This whole area here was just impassable mountains. I'm pretty sure that our world team looked at them and was like, well, this is boring. And, and was like, we can put more crap in here. And so they turned it into this like really interesting, weird little set of canyons and campgrounds to explore. That wasn't in the original State of Decay. In the original State of Decay, Fairfield involved, I think, a lot of open flat ground and a lot of big piles of rocks. There's a feral. Oh, I was talking about risk and reward. That's right. So, with the update to infestations, uh, you know, we did make it so that shooting freaks yielded loot. Uh, we'll just ignore this guy. Um, which is cool. But it's mostly, it's not like earth-shattering loot, though, because, for one thing, it's so farmable. Uh, it has to be, you know, kind of standard run-of-the-mill loot. But basically, so most of our loot, though, like, when you find the best gun, 
usually it was random. Usually you just found it in a in a gun store somewhere. Uh, you know, with the bounties, we did you know come up with some high value items that you actually had to do a specific thing in order to earn. Um, and sometimes it was going out of your way to get into danger. Uh, so that was that was a good. I think that added to the sort of fun risk reward element of the game. But like a lot of the time, your favorite stuff you didn't get for accomplishing something. You just got it by being lucky and rolling the dice enough times. Um, and so like you know, I saw those juggernauts in the distance just now. Like the first couple of juggernauts I saw, I was like, yeah, let's fight them just because I feel like it. But really, that was the only reason to fight them because I felt like it. Like there wasn't something I was going to get out of that that was worthwhile. And so. And then fighting those, uh, you know, those uh, hostiles, you know, th their loot isn't particularly good. Uh, there wasn't any particular reward for defeating that curveball. It's just the curveball goes away. But you know what? Curveballs go away anyway. Uh, you just have to wait long enough. Uh, so there isn't really this strong sense of like, if I do this, I will get this prize. Uh, it's just it's sort of, you know. I guess it's a little bit like real life in that way and that, you know, not, not everything in life is, you know, is sort of set up to be satisfying the way a video game is often set up to be satisfying. There are a lot of things in real life where, you know, it's mostly just steadily saving up for something or just doing a good job for a long time and then you get the promotion or something like that. There isn't like a big accomplishment with a big reward a lot of the time for most people's lives. Um, but that's a more satisfying way to experience things. So that's why a lot of video games are, are set up the way, because you can get that sort of like meaningful feeling reward for an accomplishment uh, that is kind of missing from your real life a lot of the time. Um, and so I feel like we kind of we've missed out on some opportunities in State of Decay 2 to provide that sense of structure. where Like if I go out and I take this risk, then I will get this reward. Or if I go out and I do something really good, I will be rewarded for it. It's, it's just a little bit of a disconnect there, which makes it more of a world you live in and less of a game you play. Um, but I don't know. I think I think we could still kind of do both. So it's something I should keep in mind for the future is like you know making sure that there's actually a reason to go and do the risky stuff. And when you do it, you feel like you got something out of it instead of just you know just saying like oh I just spent the day playing Infestation Whack a Mole because that's just how you live in this world. <laughs> anyway, there is. The latest Bounty Hunters uh, episode. Uh, the next one is going to be there when it's ready. And that's going to be recorded sometime in October with a new set of bounties. So I will see you there.